The US media is reporting that some of this Chinese malware targeting uh, critical infrastructure in the US has been designed specifically to be switched on if the US ever goes to Taiwan's aid. This is extraordinary. Are you confident that Australia has enough protections in place when it comes to our own critical infrastructure, protect, protecting, for example, submarine cables? There is no innocent purpose to have a dormant presence on a critical infrastructure or civilian infrastructure network like an electricity network or a water network or a gas network. The only purpose is for that to be activated at a time of choosing of the actor to do sabotage and malign uh, damage to our society. So if it is on there, and I think we need a lot more work to make sure that it's not, then we've got a lot more work to do to get it off and protect ourselves because it is a major national security threat. Um, we've invested a lot in this. We brought in Red Spice. We initiated the critical infrastructure reforms, but there's more to do. What about this attack on the New Zealand Parliament? Could that be a retaliation for Winston Peters pushing back with the Chinese Foreign Minister for AUKUS? Do you have a view on this? As I understand it, this occurred in 2021. And the right. truth is that Chinese intelligence agencies have an insatiable appetite for intelligence and information about... Western democracies, particularly five up democracies, New Zealand, Australia and others included, and they have been looking for vulnerabilities, whether it's MPs or electoral systems, to get that insight. Uh, just to um, wrap up on the detainee issue, when you're talking about the incentive maybe for yeah. people to travel here, are you saying broadly that if something's too tough or too harsh, that somehow creates some sort of incentive? We're saying if it's not well designed, it might leave gaps open that can be exploited by people smugglers. And this government has watered down Operation Sovereign Borders, for example, by abolishing temporary protection visas, which were very important in upholding Kevin Rudd's promise that if you come here by boat, you'll never get to stay. Now, we now know that's not true. People who came here by boat are going to stay because they've abolished that protection. And that sends a terrible message to the region, to people smugglers and to wannabe asylum seekers, that maybe if you get here under the right circumstances, this government might cave too. And what about the mandatory minimums one year? if you refuse to go home? What's your view on that? Is well, that? Could you, for example, support that element but not the, uh, you know, designating countries element? Well, I note, Andrew, that's another violation of Labor's national platform when it comes to mandatory minimum sentences. But, but I wonder if anyone in the caucus committee spoke up about that uh, last night or today. I doubt it. We're, we're anyway. not opposed to that in principle. We think right. it is necessary. We don't want to see a situation where judges give tokenistic slaps on the wrist for what are serious issues. So, in principle, we're not opposed to that. Again, we want to look at the detail. Right. What about the effect on children? Because, you know, you've got Zali Segal and a few others sort of mentioning that. What about children in detention, how they could be swept up by this? Do you think there should be a protection there in, in the legislation related to that? Well, we're happy to look at any good faith measures, but we don't want unintended consequences here. I wouldn't want people to use children as a bargaining chip to keep themselves in the country, which would be a potential consequence of carving them out from this. James Patterson, got to leave it there. Thank you. Thank you.